Let's talk about garlic. Now, we all know it has a role in the kitchen, but did you know that garlic has some medicinal qualities that we might want to think about? For instance, garlic has, well, antibacterial and antiviral properties. It can also be used to bolster your immune system. That's garlic. You see, it's been used for medicinal purposes for a long time. In fact, we have records of garlic being used by ancient cultures back thousands and thousands of years. It was also used in the First World War to fight off infection and to treat gangrene. And then there's rosemary, amazing fragrance. In fact, in the Middle Ages, this fragrance was meant to have a tranquilizing effect on you. It was used to help stop headaches. I'm not so sure that works. I prefer using my rosemary on grilled chicken. Then you've got mint. There's all kinds of mints to choose from out there, and we certainly recognize today that mint is one of those herbs that can sort of calm an upset stomach. But during Greek times, mint was used as sort of an after-bath lotion. But let's face it, if you only took a bath once every month or so, I'm not sure mint would really help that much. What do you think? Hey, if you've heard of how some of these herbs might have been used or how you use them today, post them on my Facebook page. You know, recently I received this herb vinegar as a gift, and it reminded me of, well, you can actually make these herb vinegars and also flavored oils very easily in your own kitchen. They're great for giving as gifts. They're also wonderful for using in the kitchen for cooking all sorts of things. And, well, they're also beautiful as a decorative element in the kitchen. So let me show you just how easy it is. For a marinade, what I like to do is just take some rosemary you can see I've just got some stems of rosemary that I've cut out of the garden here. If you really want the aroma to come through, gently bruising the rosemary by just taking a spoon and just stroking the leaves like this will release some of those essential oils. And then I just drop the rosemary down in the bottle. And then over here, I just have some ordinary white vinegar and it's just coming to a boil and that's what you want. You can just see the bubbles coming up around the edge. So what I'm gonna do now is just take this warmed vinegar, if not hot vinegar, I'm gonna be careful here, and just pour it into this bottle. You'll notice I made sure that the stems were well below or just below the neck of the bottle. Now all I'll have to do is take a cork, put it in the top of the bottle, but I'll wait for this to completely cool. Now you're probably asking, how long is this gonna last? Well, you wanna keep these vinegars in an out of direct light place. And if you do that, they'll last up to say four months. Put it in the refrigerator, about six months. Now let's talk about oils for just a moment while this cools. In this case, I'm gonna use some olive oil. So I'm just gonna take another bottle. And I like to use this in a salad dressing. And this is where I take just a bundle of well-dried fresh thyme leaves. And I'm just going to bruise them gently with the spoon here. And I'm gonna drop these down into the bottle. Okay, now with this, I'm gonna actually add some peppercorns. This is really good in salad. About two teaspoons of dried lemon rind. And then I'm just gonna take a really nice olive oil, and I'm gonna fill this up with olive oil. See, look at that, isn't that beautiful? Now, what you wanna do is you want, whether it's the vinegar or the oil, you want this to sit for about two weeks before you use it. Again, it's all about distribution of flavor in there. You're getting the idea here. What you wanna do is come up with your own little blend, your own little flavor, have a little fun with it. Flavor your world. You know, when the temperatures cool off in the fall, many of my herbs flush again. 
So I have a very simple salad recipe for you that is really delicious, and it allows you to take advantage of the wonderful flavors of these herbs in many different ways. What you want to start with is about a cup of spinach. We grow a lot of spinach here at the farm. Beautiful, fresh spinach. And then you're just going to take three herbs, and what I've done is just coarsely chop them. I'm starting with some tarragon. In fact, the tarragon leaves are so small, I'm taking a fourth of a cup of tarragon leaves, and then I'm going to add a fourth of a cup of flat leaf Italian parsley. Love that stuff. So good. And then some chives. Just a fourth of a cup of those. You can see I've I've uh, coarsely minced those. All these flavors combine to make a nice salad, and what I'm going to do is just sort of blend all this together. And you can take these quantities and multiply them out based on how many people you may be having over for dinner. And then what I do is I take about two tablespoons of this rosemary infused olive oil. You can see that there. And then about one tablespoon of the rosemary infused vinegar. And that's really about all it takes. And then I take some salt, some sea salt, about a half a teaspoon, and then here just some pepper, and then just mix all that together like this. Wish you could smell these marvelous aromas. So you've got a really great basic salad. It's um, low calorie. You can add lots of things from here like a hard boiled egg, piece of roasted salmon, grilled chicken, anything you like, but it's really, really good. Give it a try. If you haven't given sweet potatoes a real chance, you should now. If you haven't used them in a while, I'm gonna give you a very good reason to. They're not only delicious, but they're good for you. And speaking of good for you, here's a recipe from a great friend of mine who shared it with me while I was visiting her in Natchez, Mississippi. You know, Regina, I've always admired the way you combine interesting things. And this recipe using sweet potatoes in a salad, I think this is a real knockout. Oh, thank you. Well, you know, I cook so much, and I have to say one of my favorite ingredients are sweet potatoes. I just love them. And oh, I you think, can use them in so many ways. And they're so underutilized. So we took three medium sweet potatoes and peeled them. And I love having a sous chef dicing hey, for I me. I love cooking with I you. I love it when somebody's doing the hard work for me. <laughs> now, I preheated the oven at 4 25. That's right. What we're going to do is put them on the roasting pan and I sprayed it with oil. Always do that if you're going to roast a vegetable. You don't want them stacked, but I like pushing mm -hmm. them together I like see. that. Yeah. And it's pretty simple. We're just going to drizzle some olive oil. And you don't have to use real expensive olive oil for this. Save about, your good stuff for salad dressing. That's right. <laughs> and then I'm going to take some kosher salt. Can go lighter on the salt if you want. Sure, and sure. I just kind of, I'm a salt kind of girl. I like salt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. that's that good cracked black oh, pepper. I love it. I love that's it. just my favorite. Yeah, it's good stuff. I think if you're going to use pepper when it's cracked like that, you really get more of the flavor. Mm -hmm. And then the salad, that's going to be a great thing. I'm going to go through these in the oven. That'd be great. We're going to do those at 425 for yep. just about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. And for this dressing, we're going to do a Creole mustard vinaigrette. Okay. And it just really goes well Sounds with yummy. the sweet potatoes mm -hmm. and the spinach. So you're going to add one shallot, a small shallot, and then I'm going to do three tablespoons of Creole mustard. Half a lemon, two tablespoons, so that looks just perfect. And then I'm going to add a tablespoon of red wine vinegar mm -hmm. and two tablespoons of brown sugar. There's that little sweetness. Yep. Now what I'm going to do is puree these ingredients. Then what I like to do is add my oil slowly for a little creamier dressing. Oh. So I'm putting a little dressing on the spinach. And if you have my roasted yep. sweet potatoes, right oh, here. thank yep. you. You've already put them in a bowl for yep. me. I yep. appreciate yep. that. They're still a little warm. Yeah, which I really like. Mm -hmm. That texture, a little, you know, and the nice thing about spinach, it can support a little heat without wilting too much. So then I would just, more I'm going to drizzle a little so you get a little of that good. You, you could do these sweet potatoes ahead of time and keep them in the fridge. Absolutely. And then you've got the tartness of the cranberries mm -hmm. and that pretty color. This would be a great 
holiday salad, but it's really good any time. These are the peppered pecans, that mm. sugar and caramelized again. Just that we've got bit that of heat is mm -hmm. nice. Mm. It's just so beautiful. It's well, always a pleasure you. to cook with you. Well, I love cooking with you. You know that. You you're know the, that. You're the best. <laughs>You know, once you've tasted a really good, fresh apple variety, it's hard to, well, get excited about one that would be mediocre. I just love apples. You know, apples are so popular. Well, the apple's actually related to the rose, although they don't taste anything like one another. Now, we've all heard the saying, an apple a day will keep the doctor away. Well, apples are a fat, sodium, and cholesterol-free food. One apple has around 80 calories in it. So eating an apple a day is both good for you and a delicious way to eat healthy. Since the traditional harvest time for apples is the fall, apples have spawned all sorts of merriment and games like bobbing for apples. Another way, a more reasonable way to enjoy the flavor of an apple is in little bite-sized pieces. And that's the basis of this recipe that I wanna show you next. You're gonna to wanna to serve it at your next party. It's really good. you've never really lived. They're a lot of fun. Let me tell you about the Hanging Gourd Gardens of Moss Mountain Farm. They start right here. You see this big long arbor? Well, it's perfect for growing a fast growing vine. And when I talk about a fast growing vine, gourds you will not believe. I've got some seed down here and you'll see. And I've kind of worked up this area. Gourds love lots of sun and they'll grow in just about any kind of soil. I've enriched this with some good potting soil so there's lots of humus in here. And as soon as the soil begins to warm up, you see these irises? Well, they're just about finished, so that tells me it's time to plant the gourds. The chance of a frost has passed, and the soil is beginning to warm up, and gourds really like it hot. Now, what's amazing is they come in all different shapes. Last year, we had big, long dipper gourds, different shaped gourds hanging from here, 
and it worked out really well. And this year, I want to make sure that every inch of this is covered with leaves of gourd vines and all kinds of gourd blooms, as well as the gourds themselves. And we have another one of these arbors on the opposite side. I'm going to do the same thing for the same effect. Now, what you do is you just take the seed, and they're really big, interesting seed. You can see they're big, flat. What you're going to do is just cut, sort of space them about a foot apart, like this. And I'm just going to push those in and cover them up. Now, I've worked up the soil to about 12 inches deep, and I'm planting one variety here. This is the dipper gourd, the old-fashioned dipper gourd, the kind that they used to have by the well where they would dip out of a bucket some water and drink from it. Now, what I'll do is once these come up, uh, they'll have a primary set of leaves, and then the next set will be these big round leaves. These will germinate in about 10 days, and you'll, be, you'll see these great big leaves on them within two weeks, and then they start putting up runners, and that's when I'll lay some little sticks along here, and that'll give them a leg up, so to speak, so they can begin to climb over this entire arbor. Now, last year I actually took some string and kind of tied it along, and I may do that again this year. All you need is just something that kind of assists them. They put out little tendrils that will hang on to each of these metal supports that make the arbor. One last tip. I fertilize generously with an organic fertilizer because you really want to make sure they're well fed so you can grow the biggest gourds in the neighborhood. seed party mix is a big hit anytime I serve it and it really doesn't take a lot to prepare this. You can prepare it ahead of time, you can put it in an airtight container and have it ready for your next soiree. Really, really simple. What you want to do is you want to start with some pumpkin seeds. These are raw pumpkin seeds. I'm using two cups. I'm going to place them in a bowl here and then you want some of these small wheat breakfast cereals, uh, unsweetened. It's just plain little wheat squares. I'm going to mix all that together. It's two cups of those. And then one cup of pretzel sticks, and I've broken them in half just to get the size about right. All right, now to this, you're going to take some melted butter. And what I have here, melted it, and it's three tablespoons. And you just want to pour that in and cover it evenly and just blend until it's all mixed together like this, okay? Look at that. Probably looks like autumn, doesn't it? Now, you've got your base. It's the butter adds some flavor, but it also allows all these other ingredients that I'm about to add to attach to the seeds, the pretzels, and the cereal. Okay, now we're gonna boost the flavor with just three more ingredients. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take three cloves of minced garlic. I'm gonna add that to it. And then I've got one and a half teaspoons of cumin. Mix that all into it. And then one teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. And you know, that's optional. Um, you could also add a little Tabasco if you wanted to, to, to give it a little heat. But just mix all this together and you're done except for cooking it. What I'm gonna do then is spread this evenly across the cookie sheet. And I'm gonna bake this for about 30 to 35 minutes in a preheated oven at 350. We'll spread this out evenly. And you'll begin to know this is ready. I, I'll open it up and stir it around some, um, just because I want the pumpkin seed to toast evenly. But what you'll do is you'll start hearing the pumpkin seeds pop a little bit, and uh, you'll certainly begin to smell that garlic. And like I said earlier, once it's finished, let it cool, store it in an airtight container, and you're ready for your next party. A lot of fun to pick out the perfect pumpkin. But what is the perfect pumpkin? Well, it depends on what you're going to do with it. You know, I thought we might take a look at some fun ways to add to your pumpkin, gathering up things at the grocery store, around the yard, maybe even at the nursery, where you can give them a little more personality. 
So we've got a nice big pumpkin here. We're gonna give this pumpkin some hair. So I've cut the top out, you can see here, and I've cleaned it all out nicely. What I wanna do is I wanna actually use some of these grasses. They're beautiful this time of year, these ornamental grasses, and I'm just gonna tuck them right in here like this. By using an elevator, something to give us a little lift, and you see that clay pot will allow that grass to sit there beautifully. So why don't we talk about the face? I'm gonna use some of these little small pumpkins, and you can see I went ahead and created a place for the eyes, and I just took these little mini pumpkins and I took a Sharpie and accented the eyes here. Let's go ahead and put some eyes on this pumpkin. There we go, here's one, and here's the other one. And see, I'm just using these floral picks, and I uh, pushed a hole in the bottom of this pumpkin here, and I pushed a hole here, and then the stick just holds it in place like that. This is a bug-eyed pumpkin. All right, now, for the nose. Why don't we do something like a carrot? Now look at the difference in these two carrots. This one is very orange and smooth and shiny, and this one looks sort of frosty. Well, the reason for that is I just took some vegetable oil and a napkin and wiped down the carrot. You can see it really brings out the color. You can pop the color with pumpkins or carrots, anything you want to use here by just rubbing it down just with a little vegetable oil like that. So let's set this aside and go ahead and cut a place out for the nose here. I wanna cut a, a hole that's just slightly smaller than the diameter of that end of the carrot. There we go, that's about right. And there we go, we have a nose. All right, so I think you still need some more personality. You, know, you could take a piece of black cloth and do sort of a, I don't know, some kind of bandana thing, which would be kind of fun and you could actually drop in these little LED lights which don't generate any heat, but they'll radiate light from the inside. The other thing you can do to sort of finish off the hair is just go out in the garden and find some things that, well, they've already finished up for the year and tuck those in like this. Looks like he really needs a haircut. So we're integrating both the dead and the living grasses together. And the fact that you're using these LED lights, um, you don't have to worry about a fire. So there you go, looks pretty good, huh? Now, some other things you might think about, I had some fun with this Cinderella pumpkin. I cut this out to match some vampire teeth. So just applying some vampire teeth, isn't that wicked? We named her Toothy, and Toothy has a baby. Black vampire teeth, pretty cute, huh? Just have some fun with these pumpkins. They're big winter squash that need some personality. Give it to them, it's Halloween. If you're like me, you probably love every season of the year, but I have to say the fall for me is one of my favorites because there's so many ways to get creative in the kitchen and with decorating. I hope you've enjoyed today's show and I hope you'll try some of these recipes. Until next time, good eating and good health. There's stars in this little universe. So, that's what it looks like. Nah, not for Carl Sagan. That's what he would say. Okay, filled with olive oil. Okay. It was also used in the First World War to fight off infection and to treat gangrene. All you needed was garlic and a, a saw. This fly bothering you all. Oh, yeah. Dead. There's a thing of hot sauce right there, there you go. Just... Rock has really, okay. I need to try those for this.